let me sit up, sit up. I think that dishwasher is gonna keep beeping. Actually. Oh, okay. Hello everyone. Um no one's on here yet, but I'm still gonna start because the playback will always be available. Anyways, for those of you who are going to join in and watch this video, um, first I'd like to say thank you for stopping on over here. My name is L.A. Bonds, and you are here at Likewise Living. Likewise Living is just a wonderful haven to know more about living according to God, you know, doing things God's way. And so I wanted to pop on here um, to basically just share some things that um, that are on my heart and that I feel would be helpful. Um, as you know, we are in the middle of the COVID pandemic. And um, for so many of us in the world, um, we are under a strict order to stay at home. And it doesn't matter who you are, um, <clears throat> you are under the state order, um, stay at home order. And because of that, um, many people are being forced to do something that they have not did at all, or even imagine that they will ever do, and that is homeschool their children. Um, for me, I already homeschool my kids. I have been homeschooling my kids for quite a while. And um, I wanted to be able to just give some tips and hopefully some encouragement for those of you who are being put in this position. And um, just to hopefully alleviate any fears or pressures that you may have. Um, um, we did post on this page just to say, hey, we're going to have this time, I just a Q&A time to answer any questions that you have. I would love to if you want to put them in the comments below and I can, it'll, I guess it'll scroll up on here. Um, and even after this video is over, if you have certain questions, I'll be happy to answer them if, if I can. Um, but I really just wanted to come on and give a few tips for those of you who are in this position. Um, like I said, I've been homeschooling my children for a while now, and um, I enjoy it. And But it didn't start off uh, enjoyable. And so I wanted to come on here for those of you who may have that same experience where you're just like, I'm not enjoying this. I don't want to do this. This is horrible for me. Um, and you feel that pressure and you feel frustrated and, oh, there are so many feelings that I felt, um, at the beginning of homeschooling. So, uh, let's go ahead and just jump right in. I do have my little notes right here. Um, and as you see, there's not that many. Um, so I wanted to just go ahead and jump right in. First things first, um, there was one question that was posted on the page and the first question was, um, what do I do with my little children while I am schooling the big children? And in this young lady's case, she has like a toddler and she has a um, school age child. And so what I suggest is to create items or give um, playtime for your smaller child like the toddler child um give her, that child something to do that takes a while um for instance um water play takes a while um that's fun um and uh you know any type of kinetic learning where a child is building or um being able to spread things out, so like finger painting, things where it would just keep their attention for a nice amount of time. 
um, that always is helpful. Um, also, your child's favorite movie or television show, that is also helpful. Um, those types of things, um, when I was doing that, and I still do that because I have children that are ages, um, well, I homeschool children that are ages 14, 11, 8, and then I have a toddler who is 3, and then I have uh, an infant who is 6 months. And so I do juggle the entire thing with how do I keep the toddler busy because the baby, I can really put my, um, I can wear the baby around, you know, with the um, little baby carriers. Um, but my toddler, he's everywhere in the house. And so what I do try to do is make sure that he has something or an activity of some sort that will hold his attention for a long period of time. Um, I also try to do his schooling before I do my older kid's schooling. That way he doesn't feel like he's missing out. So I, he's three, so I pull out his flashcards, I pull out his blocks, I pull out his little um, dry erase um, workbook where he's practicing circles and, and triangles and all of those different things. We're going over, going over lots of different things. Who's that? Hey Pam, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, so good to see you on here. Hope you're doing well. Um, <clears throat> but so those are some just some tips. Um, what I would love to do is encourage you, though, um, with when you're having a small toddler, try not to, um, you know, manage and micromanage the little one you know what I found that is if I try to keep my child and I don't know if you've ever found this to be true but if I'm trying to keep my child in one area to do one thing um what they usually end up doing is the opposite they want to run and they want to um not do the item that I said do you know and so what I try to do is Make sure there are enough things. And if I see that he is trying to go into another area of the room, allow it. Especially as long as it's somewhere that I can actually see. You know, um, that way you don't become frustrated. You know, I know in the past I have did things like put gates up. And the gates will cause some contention, you know. And so it's like, okay. I don't want him to feel enslaved and I don't want him to feel um, like he can just go somewhere and just, you know, put markers all on the wall and stuff, which has happened <laughs> before. Um, but I do want him to still feel like he is loved, that he he is wanted, his presence is wanted, um, and that he is not a bother. And so, uh, you know, I want to just encourage you to just try to keep your peace remain calm and um if it helps you know turn on some wonderful music like just some soothing sounds that will be helpful for you helpful for the children that are learning as well as maybe even helpful for your toddler a lot of, i know a lot of times if i have too much noise like tv if i got paw patrol going on in the background uh they may turn into paw patrol you know <laughs> jumping off of stuff and ready to save the day and I don't need that when I'm trying to keep another child focused. So hopefully that helps. Well, since that, I didn't have any more questions on that post, um, I want to just give some tips that I have found very helpful um, with homeschooling that I think um, you won't necessarily find around this time. Um, I've looked at so many videos and read so many blogs and I've even received so many messages from families that are asking what do I do this is crazy and and people are asking me I would like to say kind of like the wrong things how do I make a schedule and I'm thinking sometimes it's not necessary so I want to give some tips um that um I learned and it became very helpful for me not saying nothing's wrong with scheduling trust me I have a routine here at our home too, but um, but I want to share some things that are maybe countercultural that you may have not necessarily thought about 
um, as it regards to homeschooling. So let's go ahead and jump right in my little notes. Okay. Number one, um, don't have hurried mornings. This has been very helpful for me over the years to not have a hurried morning. Something that I learned um, when I first began homeschooling is I felt like I needed to be up at this time, doing this at this time, doing this at this time. And what ended up happening was I I still felt dreaded I, there, there there was so much drudgery no one was there was no happiness there was no joy there was there was so much sorrow rather in the morning and especially if you're like me anything like me i'm not a morning person i it take me a while to get up and understand that today is the day that the lord has made um <laughs> takes me a while to rejoice and be glad and and I can admit that and I know there are a lot of people that are very similar to that and so not having hurried mornings is very helpful because it does not put that unnecessary it will put that it doesn't put that unnecessary stress on you um and your children you know um remember when you or your kids were getting up and going to public school or whatever private school or charter school, or whatever institutional school they were going to, they had to be up at a certain time and it was all this hurrying and rushing and all these different things. And And I'm aware that uh, virtual learning has a certain start time and a certain end time and different things like that. But don't hurry the morning, you know? Um, if breakfast is not on the table or if children have not ate breakfast at a certain time, relax. It's okay. Breakfast can be 8 at 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Okay? There's no rules that says breakfast needs to be 8 before 11. Okay? You can you can have breakfast anytime. Breakfast can be also any food. Um, and so um, those types of things, not hurrying your morning can become a very helpful lifestyle adjustment during this homeschooling time. Number two learning together okay this has been one of my most favorite um attributes of homeschooling over the years because in the beginning when i first started um it was very much do this okay the word this says this do this do this do this and i'm gonna be honest with you a lot of it was i didn't know what i was talking about i didn't know what i was teaching i i hadn't been uh, abreast of a lot of the subjects however it was still my duty to um, execute them to 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 teach or and to be able to support their learning and all of these different things and so I found it very helpful to one remind my children that I'm not perfect and that I don't know a lot and that if there's something that I don't know and that my child doesn't know, we write it down and we learn about it together. And when I tell you, this has been one of the most fascinating attributes that I think we have shared within our homeschool because we we can build on each other's confidence. We can go back and forth and, you know, we did things as far as go to, you know, YouTube and we're YouTubing and learning methods, you know, learning different um, um things in mean, science and history and English together. We're learning together and it kind of um it kind of helps our my children also understand that, you know, oh, okay. You know, she's not the only person in charge of my learning. I am as well. And so, uh that kind of goes into my next point, which is do not assume full responsibility for their learning. Um one thing I found very fascinating with my children, especially, and I don't know if you find this fascinating with yours, my children can hear certain songs one or two times and they know it. Like, they know it. I've seen my children even learn dance moves from just one or two experiences and they got it. Um, those types of things have taught me one wonderful thing. They can learn also on their own 
And so um, I have taken the responsibility of supporting my children in their learning and how they learn best. And I think that will be helpful for those of you who are feeling who are struggling because your child doesn't want to read the text and then answer the question. They may want to sing and dance and maybe they may want to put the text in a song and learn it better. So I think it's wonderful if what parents do sometimes just step back and support that child's way of learning. Um, YouTube is not bad, you know, um, going on TV and watching a documentary or watching the movie instead of always reading the book is not bad. There's nothing wrong with those things. Um, you know, sitting on the floor or laying in the bed doing the work that they need to do, not being responsible for all of their learning, allowing your child to feel, um, to have ownership of their learning capabilities. Because quite frankly, if I have a brain and my child has a brain, he has his own way of doing things. And it's not always my way. And that's a unique attribute of homeschooling is that a child gets to take ownership of their learning and it relieves the parent um, mostly from how that child learns. It, and our job as parents is just to support that person and what helps them learn best. Now, well, of course, if you find your child um, is dilly-dallying and procrastinating and distracted, it is your responsibility to bring them back into that area of focus and how to focus on what they need to finish. Um, but <clears throat> do not assume full responsibility for your child's learning because they can learn a lot of things without you. Okay. Next thing on my list is read. Okay, this is one of the things that I really took for granted in the beginning because I felt like this is almost a waste of time. And as much as I love reading to my kids when they were really small, some reading to them when they're big made me feel like, you know, why am I doing this? You know, you already know how to read, you know, and all of that. But it made me think about um, how I am when I'm at church. And I've read the Bible. Um, I have my own Bible, of course. But something happens when I'm at church that brings the word alive. Is when my pastor actually starts quoting the words. For some reason, I'm able to retain the word of God um, a lot easier. And I can understand it much more. And it may have to do with how he inflates certain words and how he stops and asks for meanings and gives explanations for certain things. And so in the same notion, when we read as parents, regardless of the content, I mean, I have said that, uh, I mean, not have said, I have more than likely have read more things as a homeschooling mom to my kids than I have ever read in my entire life. Okay. Um, and I wouldn't say that any of it was unnecessary because my kids have a high reading capability. And you would think that someone who consistently every day hears someone reading to them will probably dip back and not necessarily know all the ways to read or how to pronunciate or all these different things. And it's quite the contrary. My children can read very well and they can articulate extremely well. And so I have, I have definitely equated that with the reading, reading out loud to them. So no matter what it is, if it's your child and they have their schoolwork that the school has given to them and it's a story, how about you? Go, you and that child go back and forth, reading paragraph to paragraph or take a page, you read a page and the next person reads the next page. You'll be astounded by the amount of retention, by the amount of engagement, as well as the bonding that you experience with that child. Okay, so that's that tip. Um, my last tip is do activities together. Okay, and I know a lot of people are probably thinking, well, dog, you're consuming a lot of my time with my kids. No, I would say 
do one activity together that's not school related. You know, even before my children went to bed tonight, what we did, we played a game of hide and seek. And I know with everyone being inside the house, you can kind of feel like, oh, we're crammed up. We can't do anything. We can't go to the playground. We can't go to the trampoline park. We can't go skating, bowling, all the things that we enjoy doing um, that gives us that interaction. But moving about in the house actually is helpful as well. So do something together with your children so that they can have a clear understanding that everything doesn't always have to be out of the house. It can be in the house and that you are also fun. You like to do things with them. I, I know um, for so many years, I used to think that um, my parents were boring. And I know my children thought that I was boring, that all she does is do this, 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 this. But when I started climbing trees with my kids, um, doing dance moves way better than my kids, uh, playing hide and seek, um, making stink bombs with my children, all types of things, building forts that look way better than theirs, you know. My kids started thinking, um, oh, wow, mom and dad really have some fun, you know, attributes about them. So I invite you to do those things. And last but not least, and I thought that was my last one, but I forgot about this one and it's not on my notes, is to relax. Relax. Okay, when you are at home with your children, you do not want them to feel so pressured that they feel like they are bothering you, that their presence irritates you. One thing I have always thought about is the things that I remember most about when I was a kid. And I'm going to tell you right now. The things that I remember most when I was a child was when I actually had time with my family. Those are the items that I re that I cherish the most. Those memories alone. My I do not rem I do not cherish the memories of watching television. I do not cherish the memories of um eating dinner. I do not cherish the memories of packing up my lunch. I do not cherish any of those men, but the memories that I do cherish is having conversations at the table, playing games with my family, going on trips, um, coloring. Oh my goodness, we did so much art in my household. And those are the Start th those are the things that I would invite you to start thinking about. What do you want your children to remember most and cherish most about this time with, that they get to spend with you and that you get to spend with them in the home? What do you want them to cherish most? What do you want? What memory do you want to establish with them that they hated that? It was a horrible experience or that, man, my mom and dad was awesome you get what i'm saying i think my kids have been just raving about you know um that's the the uh the food they just been raving about and when i tell you i've been trying to master almost every recipe known to man that i have um someone says we're doing a lot of art yes Allowing your children to do that with you um, gives them a, a, a level of engagement and bonding that, I mean, it cannot be erased. You can't replace that. These are moments in their life and in your life that probably we won't get back. You know, think about that. Think about that. After this plague is complete, man, when will be the next time that you will be have to be locked in the house with everyone you love. You know, how would you treat that? How are you going to treat that? I invite you to just wake up tomorrow. Of course, starting a new leaf. Inspired and encouraged to take your time. Okay. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your children. Laugh. Play, relax, read, don't rush anything, okay? And do some activities together, all right? 
Well, I enjoyed this time with y'all. And if you have any questions, if you want to ask me anything in the comments, I'd be happy to just answer them. If I can, I haven't experienced everything under the sun, but I have experienced um, a great deal of things. I want to leave you with this scripture that's found in Isaiah chapter 41, verses 13. It says, for I am the Lord your God who holds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Y'all, that scripture has been one of my staples and one of my closest friends, Amanda, when I first started um, homeschooling a few years ago, that was the first thing she, she texted me. And she's like, hey, you need to know this. You need to know this. You have a helper. You have a helper and the Holy Spirit is not shy about helping his. Okay, so call on God. And sometimes God is going to charge you, challenge you. Sit down and just listen and enjoy. Okay? All right, y'all. I pray that you're blessed. I pray that your morning in the morning is just filled with joy. And if it's not, take a chill pill. Stop. Okay? Go for a walk with the kids or not. But just enjoy the day. Enjoy the time that you have. All right. Have a great one.